Hi, it's Christina with the Sisyphean Journal. And let's look at a question. Were there really wards full of women dying from botched septic abortions in the days before legalization? Well, let's look at what Dr. Julius Lackner of Michael Reese Hospital in Chicago reflected on what he, um, when he was there from 1900 to 1914. So this was before antibiotics, before blood transfusions. So in that 14 year period, 500 women were treated for septic abortions, both criminal abortions and miscarriage during those 15 years. Of those 500 women, there were four deaths. That doesn't sound like, you know, you'll hear claims there were whole wards full of septic abortions and half of them died. Well, I don't think four is half of 500. You know, maybe, you know, maybe it's racist math to say that four is less than half of 500. Now, I have verified that two of those four definitely were criminal abortion patients, Lizzie Ornstein and Bessie Braun. And today we're looking at Bessie's death. Bessie was a 22-year-old homemaker and mother of two an immigrant from Austria. She died at Michael Reese Hospital on April 6 of 1906. Both verbally and in writing, Bessie named midwife Julia Gibson as the person who had per perpetrated the abortion for a $5 fee on March 20th. Now note, midwife, somebody with the qualifications that the abortion rights movement says should be allowed to do abortions. They are perfectly fine with midwives doing abortions. So, why would they have a problem with a midwife doing Bessie's abortion? So, and a majority of the Chicago area abortions were done in that era by doctors and midwives who ran thinly veiled advertisements. Now, Bessie's husband, Abraham, testified at the inquest. He denied knowing anything about the abortion until Bessie had become seriously ill. And... Um, she was finally hospitalized on a Thursday. He said that prior to her death, Bessie said that she'd written the guilty midwife's name and address on a piece of paper which was in the bed at their home. Abraham found the paper and turned it over to authorities during the inquest. Now, Julia Gibson, who had been at Bessie's bedside during her dying declaration in the hospital, was being escorted out of the hospital by police when she asked to go to the women's dressing room in the hospital basement. So she was permitted to go in while a police officer stood guard outside the door. Somebody should have frisked her. The officer heard a shot, forced the door, and found Gibson lying on the floor, suffering from a self-inflicted gunshot wound to the chest. She was admitted to the hospital for treatment and was kept both under arrest and under suicide watch. And as she lay near death, she confessed her guilt in Bessie's abortion. And she later recovered. Now, I'm not able to find anything that happened after that, but Bessie was not Julia Gibson's first dead patient. She had been indicted for the November 1905 death of 18-year-old Dorothy Spur, who died at County Hospital. So, hope this challenges a little some of your beliefs about criminal abortions.